Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shean and its towns. Ephraim did not drive out the Canaanite that was dwelling in Gezer. Zebulon did not drive out the inhabitants of Kitra. Asher did not drive out the inhabitants of Akko nor the inhabitants of Sidon. Nor Alab, Agzib, Helba, Afik, Rehab, all the hijack got to live. All the hijack got to be cozy. Having the hijack cozy on your land is like having a parasite cozy on your body. Eventually they're going to team up and try to take control. God. This is to knock only such contra. Shabbat Shalom to the home team. Lawa. Hawa. We did it again. I'm reading the book of Judges, chapter 1, verse 27. Manasseh did not drive out the hijack. Okay. Ephraim did not drive out the hijack. Zebulon did not drive out the hijack. Asher did not drive out the hijack. Naphtali did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and the inhabitants of Beth Anath. So they dwelt among the Canaanite. Now you got the Canaanite tribes teaming up more on more war. And they, they form a Moorish, Moorish confederacy, right? Now that we have a clear depiction of what's going on right here in America, right here in Kalelu, the fight for your land, brothers and sisters that look just like you, tribes that look just like you teaming up against you. I mean, what happened with the Kumse and the Chickamauga? There was a treaty of peace and friendship made right in the height of the Chickamauga War. To pull the rug out from the Hebrew prophet, from the Hebrew priest king, from Tukum son, from Ten Skatahawa, his brother the prophet. It's happening in real time, I know. You you just waking up from a flash knockout. Now that the code is written on your heart bone like who I said it would be your code. Our code is ancient. You can't put it on Israel and Ten Commandments. The code existed before Moshe came down with the tablets. The code existed. So the code wasn't created when the Israelite tribes were created out of Egypt, man. This Melchizedek flow, this flow has always been flowing like steady water, my nugget. Back to the frame and the shape. The creation is the code. And the code is the creation. Which is why when you're back in code, you get a piece of mama. You get that creation. You get your land, your inheritance. And you tell me. When you talk to Hawa, what do you ask for? Do you ask to be at peace and secure on your own land again? With your tribe as a wall of protection? A wall of protection. How can we go on through this? You know, we weren't great listeners. Hawa said to get these hijacks off our land. But Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Bethshean. Ephraim did not drive out the Canaanite that was dwelling in Gazer. Zebulon did not drive out the inhabitants of Kitron. Asher did not drive out the inhabitants of Akko. Naphtali did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh. The Amorite forced the children of Dan up into the mountain. Where they do that at? This is Dan's tribal land. How do you get forced into the mountain? By the Amorite. 
And what side of the Arnon, I mean Anion River, are we on anyway? We just talking. Anion. Oh, yeah, man, we popping off. <laughs> Which y'all thought it was over? Y'all thought we was chilling? Just because you don't witness doesn't mean there's not a reality happening all around you. That is drop nation. That's the purified water. Getting the code is not saying, oh, well, according to what I'm reading right here in these Ten Commandments, I should be pretty good. <laughs> Getting the code is getting in the vibration of the code. The code should be tuning you up. It should stop being two-dimensional to you. And it should start being the frequency that protects you. And you must believe in it. That's not religious. To believe in the frequency that protects you. I mean, you are the Magi. Where are you getting your... Where is the source of your power, Magi? KTC, that means keep the code. Enjoy Shabbat. Chilling in my robe. Shabbat shalom to the home team. Joy world. Choose up village. The checkpoint. The mark. The sign. The maqui. The Amarik. The Amaru Khan. We did it again. Chapter 2, an emissary of Hawa went up from Gilgal to Bakim. He said, I brought you up from Egypt and I brought you to the land that I swore. I swore. I swore to your forefather. Again, that means ain't no genealogy test going to outweigh Hawa's word and promise of a tribe to have their Specific tribal land, their specific lots that was divided by Hawashua, Joshua Khan. Joshua divided the land. And you may say, oh, I had people in my family rocking on this land for at least four or five hundred years. Cool, cool. But they're not originals here. They don't belong to the original covenant. You can't genealogy your way into the covenant. And when Hawa says, I swore this land to your fathers. And I say, I shall never annul my covenant. My covenant is forever, my noggin. This to knock only session. What New Testament? What new covenant? Your covenant is forever. Hawaii making no new covenant until you out of captivity again, my knock. You got your covenant when you got out of captivity the first time. Out of Egypt, con. Wilderness time, con. Has there been another covenant since then? Did I miss something? Did I miss something? Then what's this new test about? The new covenant hasn't happened until Hawaii. You know, pops off with that pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. Now, what is mixed coal to me? <laughs> Are we talking cloud dragon? Cloud dragon. Mixed coal to cloud dragon. Israelites following a cloud by day. Fire by night. Cloud dragon. Next go to Meshi, Meshika, Meshi. Presser John 65, we're coming in hot because we're going to be uh, talking about that Mexico Ultra. And we're going to be talking about that connection with Amram. We don't talk Amram enough, Moses' is pops. Again, this ain't history. <laughs> My nigga, this your future. Because uh, according to Deuteronomy, Moses is left unabated. His body was never damned. And when you recon his father Amram, his body was also left uh, un undimmed. His eyes were never dimmed. You know, that's something that Hawa has with some of his real ones. You know, they so-called die 
but the life force never truly leaves their body. You know, if you find Moses today, he'll look like he's alive, right? He might just uh, start popping off. You wouldn't look all decayed up because <laughs> Hawa, you know, loves that vessel, you know, so much that he preserves it. And when you recon some of the dragon drop, they have something, a term that they use for the same thing where, you know, certain dragons, you know, do the same type of process where they may, uh, you know, go to another consciousness or whatever, but their actual bodies, you know, are still preserved. I mean, you know, you got to dig on it. Cloud Dragon, Mexico Oto, Makir, Totex. Let's go. All this is happening. That's why we're talking about it. Forbidden histories of America is biblical history. But when you start tying in, the beauty is, Drop Nation, that we've spent so long developing our own flow, investigation, our own narrative, you know what I mean? That we're putting a, our story together. We have our narrative. We have our point of view. We don't have to go off any scholars at this point. We have our own point of view, our own perspective, our own investigation. You know, we, through that, are not only up to date, but we are literally in the future. Preparing the way cloud by day fire by night to lead the way so Hawa said I brought you to the land that I swore to your forefathers in the book of Judges chapter 2 let's go and I said I shall never annul my covenant with you but you shall not seal a covenant with the inhabitants of this land come on man Hawa said don't make no deals no treaties. Why do you think the Chickamauga were popping off? Why I said no deals. Don't seal no covenant with no, no one else. This is yours. It's like you building a playground for your children. You say this is yours. Because those other kids, you don't know them. But from, from the way I'm, you know what I'm saying, observing them, they shouldn't be here. We're going to do this just for our children. That's like Drop Nation going on Joy World and we build a nice little playground on Joy World. And we say this is for the tribes, families and children. It's for our children. We have nothing against nobody else's children, but we came together to build something for our children. You in the wave, you in the flow, you can enjoy. It. But those other inhabitants, <laughs> those strangers, that's not for them. They won't respect it the same. They don't need to be touching this frequency. You forgot how special you are. That certain things are just for you. Just like the Shabbat. To an extent. You know, not everybody, you know what I'm saying, was able to keep the Shabbat on the highest frequency. Yeah, they can observe it. But they can't really tap in the way that you can because you are literally the seed, literally the frequency, literally the heritage of Hawa. Our frame and shaper, I'm a Abba. I'm just popping off. Shabbat Shalom, KTC, MHOE, dripping in that Mamsa. So Hawa said what? I shall never annul my covenant with you. I'm never going to break my promise with you. That's your land forever. I don't care about nobody's genealogy test. <laughs> That's yours. That's yours, baby. That's yours. But you, here's the, here's the deal we made. We made a deal, y'all. Our ancestors, if we are them, we made a deal. Here's the deal. But you shall not seal a covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall break apart their altars. Hijack free. No power before our power. Hawa is not saying be mean. Hawa is saying break apart the altars of the hijack so that they have no power before 
me. I'm the creator. I need this land to be hijacked free. We got to pop off and hijack city. We got to get this out of here, man. We got to pop off. And what do we do? How do we respect this code, this covenant? When we say KTC, don't act like, oh, I heard it before. Don't act like we've been doing this for so long. Don't act like our parents were KTC. They're brilliant people. They're loving parents. But don't act like our parents were all KTC. This is a new generation popping off KTC. Why weren't they popping off KTC? We could talk about all the movements, all the Panther parties, all the uh, Tulsa, Oklahomas. We could talk about all the black power it is, civil rights that. Show me KTC. I see Christianity. I see Islam. I see idolatry. I see throwing stones at Merculus. Show me KTC. I wait. So don't act like this is something, you know, oh, some, oh yeah, I heard it before, I get it, KTC, sounds good, keep the code, okay, nah, we say it so much so you can get it embedded in your heart bone. But at the end of the day, you got to take that next step and realize how special you are, how special we all are to be in this frequency, able to KTC. That's a wild promise, this generation will be the one that is written on your heart bone. You didn't need no super miracle. People still doubt in Hawaii. What if Hawaii doesn't show? What if Hawaii doesn't save us? What if, what if? Man, you, you've been separated so far. You just forgot. Certain things are embedded in our coding. Certain things are truly 100% guaranteed and that's KTC this ain't no ordinary thing to keep the code as a nation but we're here because of our failure to respect the code as a group as a tribe we let this we, you see how it starts right Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Sheen. Ephraim did not drive out the Canaanite. Zebulon did not drive out the inhabitants of Kitron. Asher did not drive out the inhabitants of Akko. Neptali did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh. And the Amorites forced the children of Dan. They forced them way back into the, into the mountains, my knock. So we didn't even do what we were supposed to do from Jump Street. <laughs> At hello, we was off, off key, off frequency. Our frequency was was all chapped up. Left to the bro yourself, because of all the hijacks on the land. Now you say the same thing today, they're gonna look at you like they do today. They're gonna say, "Who you think you is? Why you think you got some super connection with the Creator? Why you know we we been here for um umpteen years, whatever you know." Uh, we got paperwork, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're going to give you the same damn excuses and stuff today as if you said the same thing as a tribe. Get off my land. They're going to look at you up and down and say, shit, I like it here. I like it here. America's a melting pot. I'm a descendant of a uh, uh, European born here. I'm now a, I'm an American now. They changed the rules. You can now go anywhere you want, be born there, and take that status, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Take that title. I could be born in Canada, now I'm a Canadian, but the indigenous Canadians, the indigenous Khans, Canada, they don't even get counted. The title is passed to whoever's born in there. They just pass the title around like it's French fries, man. Anybody want to fry? These are good. But what happened to the original potato plant the root they just take the titles but your land is promised and Hawaii said all I'm asking you to do is make no deals with these hijacks here man even if you do even after we didn't clear them off the land 
But why I said, all right, cool, whatever, man. But just don't make no deal with them. All right, that's the whole thing. I don't want them to throw you back into this pagan shit. And we said, all right, let's keep reading. You shall break apart their altars, but you did not hearken to my voice. And we didn't hear. We didn't listen. What is this that you have done? So I also said, I shall not chase them out before you. And they will be unto you as thorns in your side. Psalm 83, Confederacy. The only way any so-called British, European, anything could be over here. Is with a confederacy of Nagas that look just like you to help them out. A thorn in your side, that's not even saying the least of it, man. A thorn in our side. And we we got such a big heart, you know, we ain't even just, we ain't even mad at no other tribe of people to this day it ain't about being mad and pointing fingers the whole point of reading this is just to know that we got to take responsibility that we let it in it's not your fault for being a hijack a hijack's gonna be a hijack and it don't mean that everybody from the tribe of the, the amorite is a hijack i'm sure there's some great brothers and sisters that are amorites great brothers and sisters that are moabites i'm not here to judge all y'all i'm here to get my story together to communicate with my Nagas so that we can answer a few questions, man. You know, if you want to be here, grab a seat in the back of the class. All good, but make sure you don't bring no static. And damn sure, better not be no thorn in our side. Because the wise said they're going to be unto you as thorns in your sides and their gods will be a trap, a trap. Christianity, Islam, trap. None of them is calling on the name of Hawaii. None of them is calling on the, the Hebrew, you know, power. They're hijacking it into their tribal power, into their gods. That's why they just say God and use general terms for a general God. They're not going into the paleo, the picto, because if you're talking the creator, you're talking about the creator that's created a lineage. You can't deny the entire lineage. You can't deny the children of Jacob. Yaqua. How long do you think we will be dormant, man? How long do you think this spell lasts? You want it to be forever. The hijack always wants the worst, but at the end, they got to settle for what they can get, right? Game's over, my nigga. We here now. Their gods will be a trap for you. It happened that when the emissary of Hawa spoke these words to all the children of Israel, the people, the people raised their voices and wept. They named that place Bokim, crying, and they brought offerings there to Hawa. Joshua had sent the people away and the children of Israel had gone. Every man to his heritage to possess the land. The people served Hawa. In all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great work of Hawa, which he had done for Israel. For Israel. These works Hawa did for the tribe of Israel. For Hara. For uh, I was about to say <laughs> Jerusalem. <laughs> I love to my bro uh, Yosef for Jerusalem, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, for these people that have this frequency, the Creator has specific work that He put in for you, and you got a specific code, a specific covenant that is within you. It's not on the pages. Of just Exodus 20. That's just the translation of what's inside of you. That's not telling you to worship no other power. But the source of your power. Your energy. Your frequency. 
that which has framed and shaped you, the consciousness that you belong to. You think you're some singular consciousness? Or is there a whole? That whole is our Amma Abba. The Christians call Mama wisdom. Solomon needs her to fortify the kingdom. She was there from the beginning. She pleased Hawa. She pleased our father. That's a union that is never separate. And you need to rethink, relearn, and understand the power of our Khalifas, of our Shebas, of our Queens. How it comes together, you know, as one common point, one common mark, how we both hit the same mark when we both are in code. We're not fighting against each other no more. We want the same kingdom, the same vision, the same protection. We honor our aquas and our aquas honor the ox. The walls of protection go both ways, man. And we pop off and we KTC. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of Hawa, died at the age of 110 years. They buried him within the borders of his heritage in Timnath Haris and Mount Ephraim, north of Mount Gosh. The entire generation as well was gathered in to its forefathers. A new generation arose after them that did not know Hawa nor the deeds that he had performed for Israel. The children of Israel would do what was evil in the eyes of Hawa and would worship Balim, Baal. They would forsake Hawa. The power of their fathers who took them out of the land of Egypt, out of bondage and to follow the gods of the others from among the gods of the people that were around them. They would prostrate themselves to them and anger Hawa. They would forsake Hawa and worship Baal and Asherith. Now you got the Asherith poles, the Christmas trees. Then the wrath of Hawa would flare against Israel and he would deliver them into the hands of plunderers and they would plunder them. Managa, where's your things? Where's your stuff? Where's your staff, my naga? You've been plundered. Papu Bu, Doom Diverses, 1452. Take their things, movable and immovable goods, kingdoms, principalities, all their land. You've been plundered. You've been vanquished. But they thought it was over, man. They thought it was a wrap. They thought it was over. They thought it was uh, finito, Managa. They thought when they cut the tree and only saw those, those tree stumps that them trees wouldn't grow back into beautiful, I mean, magnificent, you know, pillars of Ahab, you know, feeding the tribe again, water for the flock. Let's go. We're still in Judges chapter 2, verse, let's get it from here in verse uh, 14. The wrath of Hawah would flare against Israel, and he would deliver them into the hands of plunderers, and they would plunder them, and he would deliver them into the hands of their enemies, so that they could no longer stand before the enemies. Now we say, what if Hawah doesn't help us? What if Hawah can't save us? We're just plundered by enemies. They're too strong. Their technologies, their medicine, their psychology, their necromancy is too much. Verse 15, wherever they go out in battle, the hand of Hawa would be upon them for evil. That's why you lost, man. Not because they're stronger than you, but your creator wouldn't let you 
prosper if you ain't KTC. You ain't going to let your children prosper if they don't listen. They're going to be wherever they're going to be, right? <laughs> so, and Hawa had spoken, and as Hawa had sworn to them, they would be very distressed. Then Hawa would set up judges who would save them from the hand of their plunderers, but they would not hearken to their judges either, for they would stray after gods of, of others and prostrate themselves to them. They would turn away quickly from the path that their fathers had traveled to hearken to the commandments of Hawa. They did not do so. No KTC. When Hawa would set up judges for them, Hawa would be with the judge and he would save them from the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge for Hawa would have relented because of their outcry before those who oppressed them and who crushed them. So Hawa would set up a judge that would save them right from the hand of the enemy. So later they say, well, you know, Hawa would appoint a judge as a savior. They try to translate it as savior, but we know <laughs> Isaiah 43, there's only one savior, but Hawa can save you through other people, right? We call them Hamashiachs, different things, Hakans, priest kings, you know, Melchizedek, Zeldex, Preston Johns. You dig? Let's go. For Hawa would have relented because of their outcry before those who oppressed them and who crushed them. But then it would happen that upon the death of the judge, they would turn back and be even more corrupt than their forefathers to follow the gods of others, to worship them and to prostrate themselves before them. They would not omit any of their misdeeds or their stubborn way. So the wrath of Hawaii would flare against Israel and he would say, because this nation has violated my code, my commandment, my covenant that I commanded their, fo their forefathers and they did not hearken to my my voice, I too shall no longer drive away any man from before them. Anaga, you think this is history or is this current facts? And if it happened that way historically, then you learn your lesson, you adapt, you adjust, you, you self-correct, you self-motivate, you self-generate within the code. Feeding off that source that is you, my noggin. And you start, you know, springing back out, man. Springboarding back up. Bouncing back like round ball. You ain't living on a ball, but you can sure bounce back like a round ball. You know what I'm saying? It feels good to KTC. Let's get a little more. Because we know the result now. Because we know all you got to do is, is observe, right? <laughs> Back to that uh, quantum. You know, all you got to do is observe, right? Witness. Collapse the wave pattern on your reality that you're creating. Believe it. If you're going to believe that, you know, that wall over there is real or those steps are real. Or that person in the mirror is real. If you're going to believe that, <laughs> then believe that there's a source to it, a power. And that all this deception has been to get you untapped in, to get you tuned out. And as you start popping off, get the drop that you need to make educated decisions, man. But don't get in a frequency. Don't loop around everything they are coming up with and everything they're saying on the news and everything that's getting leaked. You know, that's going to take you out of the frequency of redemption, man. Get the drop, be informed, but have a balance to it is all I'm saying. Don't be uh, lopsided in your frequency to a point where you doubt Hawa, doubt the power, doubt the frequency, the code. The moving water because ain't nothing stagnant when you got the code you moving it's always something new it's always something you learn and it's always something that you're applying you're constantly popping off a while said my covenant 
This nation has violated my covenant that I commanded their fathers and they don't listen to my voice. So I'm no longer, listen up, <laughs> I ain't going to protect you. I can't protect you no more. I am no longer going to protect you. I'm no longer going to let, you know, uh, these people feel like you got protection. Now I'm going to let them all the way in. I'm not, <laughs> I'm in verse 21. I too shall no longer drive away any man from before you from among the nations that Joshua left when he died all those people that were left it's going to be open season and they knew it their sorcerers their oracles told them they said go get them they ain't got no they ain't got no force field they ain't got no KTC and they damn sure ain't got no protection so why let those nations remain without driving them out quickly and he did not deliver them into Joshua's hand. These are the nations that Hawaii will ever remain. Come on. <laughs> this is future talk. Let's go. To test Israel through them. So even Hawaii had a plan knowing that we would fall short. Knowing that they will remain. Hawaii used them to test your heart. Your, you know, uh, your flow, your decisions, your your choosing upness, you know, your KTC ness. Will they keep the code? Remember in the book of Job, when Satan is uh, late to the meeting, <laughs> he's late to the meeting with all the angels. A while say, Where you been, man? He said, You know, I'm over there jamming people up, walking to and fro, doing what you created me to do. Which is what? He's there to test Israel. He's there to make sure you in line. When you're out of code, you got to deal with this adversary, right? But he's still invited to the meeting with Hawa. There was no war that popped off. He said, why are you late to the meeting? He said, I've been jamming people up. So Hawa is the orchestrator of it all. <laughs> and even their masters, I don't care what... Music industry, cabal, elites, the most wicked masters, the most, the most, you know what I'm saying, I don't know what to call them, you know, just purely evil, yada, yada. Even them, at the end of the day, they can only do so much. They have rules and regulations. At the end of the day, their boss was late to the meeting. Con, con. Their boss works for your father, for your ama. Their boss works for you. When you KTC, you all one with your creator. So that Satan figure, that adversary now works for you. Once you've been tested, get through your test. Even mama would test you. This is all a test. Is it real? It's based on your, you know, perspective, right? The test is real. Is what you see around you real? <laughs> Depends on your frequency, right? <laughs> Let's get some more heading into the dismount, man. And, you know, with, with all we've been able to witness together, you know, with all we've been able to see manifest together, this checkpoint feels, you know, better than, better than them all right now. You know, this Shabbat right now just feels so so full and so beautiful and, and you know we're absorbing so much positive energy so much high frequency together through all this mayhem that they want to paint you know meditate on that pure water man that was pouring down man and uh enjoy the water you know what i'm saying we're gonna have that water flowing for you you know on our shabbats that's how we you know we get that water flowing let everyone Come, you know, get a sip, get a taste, man. And, uh, have a great conversation with the water. You know, we still got a lot more coming, man. But, you know, this is uh, this is our checkpoint. This is where we're at. You know, this is where you can find us. A lot of water to drop nation. Ether Squad out. Another great week of content from the Ether Squad. We can't do it without you. And uh, the dragons on the wall. We can't do it without you. 
to Wada for all your participation and your contributions. Allow Wada to the home team. Chapter 3. These are the nations that Hawa let remain, right, to test Israel. And those who did not know all, and those who did not know all the Canaanite wars, they remained only so that the generations of the children of Israel would know to teach them warfare. But those who preceded them did not need to know. The five generate the five governors of the Philistines, all the Canaanite, the Sidon, the Sidon the Sidonites and the Hivite that dwell on Mount Laban, Lebanon, from the mountain of the plain of Hermah until the approach of Hamath, they were for Hawa to test Israel through them to know whether they would hearken the commandment of Hawa. Again, are you going to be KTC? You don't start being KTC and it's all good. Mama says she's going to come at you crooked first, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're talking about the wisdom of Solomon. So, mama's, you know, hey, mama don't give you nothing easy because she knows you got to earn it. And when you earn it, it's going to stick. It's going to be well planted. If you got it all easy, it's like planting a seed on shallow soil. You don't dig deep enough. It's not well rooted. You got to get those hard knocks. You know what I'm saying? You got to. Learn how to get back up. You got to, you know, have that code buried deep inside of you to know that you have faith in Hawa to the bitter end. And you see that that code, you know what I'm saying, has created, you know, all of these openings for you. You know what I'm saying? It has, has bridged the gap that you needed to cross to get to the other side, man. That code, you know, opened up. You know, the right door, not any door, the right door, the right door, the right entrance, the right portal. And when you walk through that door, you get your, <gasps> you get that, that frame of breath, right? That you get them ingredients getting put together again. You get Amai, your mama, her arms raised, the ha, <sighs> the breath. You need your breath. There's nothing you can do about it. You need your breath. Josh Hawa needs the breath. We're talking Josh Hawa Hawa Shawa. Then you get your security, your Wa. That is your foundation. Paleo Hebrew hijack free. And then you get your seventh letter, which is the Zion or the Zion, which is your rest or your weapon. Because you weaponize when you rest and charge up with Hawa. In the book of Jubilees, only the two highest orders of angels can keep the Shabbat in the throne room of Hawa. Only the two highest orders of angels and the children of Israel. So that's a high honor to keep Shabbat with the two highest orders of angels. You know, I'm talking about them high level seraph. Singing, singing, holy, holy, them dragons and your frame and shaper like y'all got your own frequency to yourselves. That's a high honor. Zan, Zan, and get your weapon, man. So they were here just to test Israel, to know whether they will keep the code, keep the commandments of Hawa, which he commanded their fathers through the hand of Moshe. So the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanite, Hittite, Amorite, Perizzite, Hivite, Jebusite. The Israelites took the nation's daughters for themselves as wives and gave their daughters to their sons and they served their gods. Just like Moses in the mixed multitude, Hawa wasn't having no serious, you know, issue with the mixed multitude as long as as they weren't serving their gods, man. That became the danger zone of mixing with other nations, not because they're just some, you know, terrible, you know what I'm saying, evil flow, but because of the pagan deities that came with mixing with these other tribes and giving up your own source, giving up your own power for their power. That's the beef. That's the issue. And that's exactly what went down. 
Israel took the nation's daughters for themselves and gave their sons, and they served their gods, the hijacked gods. The children of Israel did what was evil, what was evil in the eyes of Hawa, and they forgot Hawa, and they worshiped Baal and Asherah trees. Oh, now this is trees. So again, that Christmas tree is an Asherah pole where they decked it with silver and gold. The wrath of Hawa flared against Israel and he delivered them into the hand of Cushan, Rishatham, Rishatham, king of Aram, Naraim. And the children of Israel served Cushan for eight years. The children of Israel cried out to Hawa and Hawa set up a savior for the children of Israel. Hawa set up a savior or a Mashiach. This savior wasn't working on his own. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hawa is the only true savior, but they're translating it as savior. I'm reading out the uh, stones to not edition, but we can see clearly for the children of Israel and he saved them. So Hawa sent them someone to save them and they saved them, right? So just like Hosea 3, it says the children will go a long time without a king, without a con, without someone to, you know, uh, give them that priestly flow, give them that connection. Or you can translate it as save them, right? Lead them to the water. Joshua, they would say, oh, he saved them. Moses, they would say he saved them. King David, they would say he saved them. But the only savior, the source of that saving is our frame and shape. So why set up this, you know, person to save them? Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. <laughs> so Hawa said, all right, man, I'm going to send you someone to help you, man. So he sends Caleb's younger brother. Remember Joshua and Caleb, all right, who is Othniel, O-T-H-N-I-E-L. The spirit of Hawa was upon him, and he judged Israel. He went out to war, and Hawa delivered Cushan, king of Aram, into his hand. And his hand dominated Cushan, king of Aram. Oh, here we go. And the land was tranquil for 40 years. And Othniel, son of Canaz, died. So they had peace for 40 years. The children of Israel continued to do what was evil. How many chances does Hawa give us, man? You can't complain now. You got so many opportunities. Even to this day, you just don't believe in KTC. You don't believe in the frequency of Hawa. You like to talk about it. You know, you you accept that, you know, there's a possibility. But you really don't believe in it. You don't believe in the power of the creator God in you. Which means you don't believe in yourself. You believe that you're an intelligent person. You believe that you can defend yourself. But can you really? And are you really? True intelligence can acknowledge and see clearly the power that they're connected to and never doubt it and believe in it when everyone, you know, thinks it's silly and crazy. When the shit's hitting the fan, because they've seen, because they've searched. Hosea 3, the children of Israel will seek the creator. First, you have to seek the creator. That's your key, KTC. You listen to the code, you listen to the commandments, you're now seeking, applying. That's how you know Hawa is to keep the code. <laughs> Then you start to connect what they're calling 
a savior or, you know, someone that saves or someone that has a message from Hawa to save you. And that's when you get in your Khan flow, your Khan David flow. Because that's always going to lead you to that water. But you had to KTC and get to know Hawa much better <laughs> before you even saw clearly to be on a certain path and have a certain particular investigation. So off Neil died, Israel continued to do evil. They wouldn't KTC. Hawa strengthened Eglon, king of Moab. So these Moabites, right? These noble Juali Moabite flow, more science Moabites. This is our history. They know it's true. They don't deny this. They got love strictly to test us. Hawa let them rock just to test us. And test us they did. Treaties they did. They done that. Oh, they did that. To this day. So Hawa raised up their kings. <laughs> just like the pharaohs. Come on, let's go. Over Israel because they had done what was evil. They wouldn't KTC. He gathered to himself the children of Ammon and Amalek. Then he went and struck Israel, took possession of the city of Date Palms, Jericho. The city of Israel served Eglon, king of Moab, for 18 years. The children of Israel cried out to Hawa. And Hawa set up a savior or a messenger for them, who is Ehud, E-H-U-D, son of Gera, G-E-R-A who was a Benjamite. So all their saviors, is, all their Hamashiachs are coming out of Israel. So when they say, hey, worship our prophet today, we never had a prophet outside the house of Israel. What do you mean? Why can't our prophet come from our loins? Our exilarchs from our loins. Ain't nobody talking Dawi no more. They ain't talking press to John. What is press to John, you know, who rules these realms of existence, according to that $1,000 book, Medieval Empire of the Israelites by Robert Grisham, who Allah has given him dominion, Manak, from the tip, tip, top. This frequency, this priest king Melchizedek flow <laughs> over all the earth, the vortexes. That's why you got to seek David. You got to know the story, which is the future, not the past. What do you think he says about your Christian Isus or your Muslim Muhammad's Muhammad's? What's Muhammad to huh, the priest king Preston John? To King Dawi. You got to get your perspective right in your tribe. The problem is you've been looking through the eyes of a hijack and you're in the mind of a hijack. You're starting to see clearly your own line lineage, your own heritage. You see Preston John on the map in the British Museum in the 1500s. Right over the four corners in the U.S. of A. It says Prester John in the 1500s in the British Museum. That's your heritage, my nage. They ain't no Muslims. They ain't no Christians. They're Hebrew priest kings. Khan. Huh? Don't act like we don't exist no more. Nah, we're the realest that exists. We're the real ones. We're the originals. And it's get down and lay down. It can't be your way, you know, uh, or this way. It's get down and lay down.
It's Hawaii or nothing. It's tribe or nothing. You want to rock? KTC or nothing. La Wa. So now you got Ehud, <laughs> who Hawa has strengthened. The Benjamite, a man with a withered right hand. Okay. The children of Israel sent a tribute with him to Eglon, king of Moab. Ehud made himself a sword with two sharp edges, a cubit its length. <coughs> Shalak. And he girded it under his garments, under his right thigh. He brought the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Eglon was very obese, man. It happened that when he finished offering the tribute, he led away the people, the bearers of the tribute, and then he returned from the quarries near Gilgal and said, I have a secret matter for you. A secret matter for you. O king, the king said, silence. All who stood before him wept out. Then Ehud came to him as he was sitting alone in his cool upper chamber. Ehud said, I have a word of Hawa for you. So he stood up from his chair. Ehud then stretched out his left hand, took the sword from upon his right thigh and thrust it into Eglon's belly. Even the hilt went in after the blade, and the fat closed around the blade, for he did not pull the sword out of his belly. <laughs> the excrement poured out. Ehud went out to the porch, closed the doors of the upper chamber behind him, and locked him. When he had left, Eglon's servants came in and saw that, behold, the doors of the upper chamber were locked. They said, he is but relieving himself in the cool chamber. They waited for a long time, but behold, he would not, he was not opening the doors in the upper chamber. They took the key and opened them, and behold, their master was fallen on the ground dead. Ehud had escaped while they were waiting, and he passed the quarries and escaped to Sarai. So, you know, Ehud came, you know, with a purpose. He came with a purpose to be hijacked free. And even though, you know, Hawa, you know, used the king of Moab for that particular reason. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, what, 18 years of rulership over Israel. But then he rose up. This Ehud, this Benjamite, who put a whole sword into this obese <laughs> king of Moab. Now, this is real, real recon, real history, man. I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You, you sit down and talk to a real Moabite, they're going to, you know, light it up for you. But this is what goes behind the treaties of peace and friendship. This is what goes behind it, the anger and disdain and the hatred. All this war, all this bloodshed between the tribes. But it was truly, you know, we got to take our responsibility because if we were KTC, we wouldn't be dealing with these thorns on our side. But they got to take responsibility for being a thorn on our side. They're taking full advantage of our Ruach Tarde Ma. Lego. It happened when he arrived that he sounded the shofar at Mount Ephraim, and the children of Israel descended with him from the mountain, and he was before them. He said to them, Give chase behind me, for Hawa has delivered your enemies, Moab, into your hand. They descended after him. They conquered the Jordan's crossing into Moab, and they, they did not let anyone cross. They struck Moab at that time, about 10,000 men, every fearsome man, every mighty hero. Not a man escaped. So they got the giants too. <laughs> and on that day, Moab was subjugated under the hand of Israel. This leads to the treaties of peace and friendship against the Kumsay, man. This is why they had no, no sweat, no problem doing it. They said, nah, man, you know, we got to get our get back, right? We got to get our get back. Verse 30, Judges chapter 3. On that day, Moab was subjugated. They were put into captivity under Israel. That's, this is the beef. This is the underlying beef, man. And the land was tranquil for 80 years. So we had peace 
when they are subjugated. When Moab is subjugated, Israel got peace. But not when you're subjugated, they got peace. You just don't understand it today. You think it's about black and white, black people, white people. No, the whole board of true power across the plane looks like you, so-called black people. And these black people have tribal war. More on more. Psalms 83, Confederacy. So we had peace for 80 years, and after him was Shamgar, son of Anath. He struck the Philistines, 600 men with the cattle gold, and he too saved Israel. All these people that saved Israel, yet the Christians worship JC as some savior who's never went to war for Israel, never had one fight, not even one fist fight for Israel. And not one war, but has convinced the entire world that he's going to be back one day to rapture and save you. You're not even waiting for Hawa. These Christians are just waiting for JC. Hawa could show up. They'll be like, all right, all right, can you move out the way? Where's JC? Where's my man? Jesus. It's a damn shame. That ain't KTC. When you push Hawa out the way to look for another Savior. That's Hijack City. The first rule is to get all them extra people out your way and to see clearly that you only have your Ama Abba. That's where it begins directly. Hawa breathe directly into the Ruach, into the Breathe that Ruach directly into the nostrils, right, of Adam, Adam. He breathed directly. Amma was transferred directly. Now you come back through the sun to the creator. <laughs> he can't go back directly. That Ruach can't return to its source directly. You must be in a Ruach, Tarde Ma. You must still be slick. To think you can't go home directly. That's like saying, nah, my children can't come to my house, but we can meet at a third party's house. <laughs> and if they are accepted by the third party, who's calling themselves my, uh, you know what I'm saying, gatekeeper, you know what I mean? If they like them, then they can come see me. Like, come on, man, that's my child. Get out the way, hi, Jay. Let's go. Chapter four. The children of Israel continued to do what was evil, continued to break the code. And once Ehu died, Hawa delivered them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan. So now you got the king of Moab. Now we got the king of Canaan. That's why they made their Psalms 83 confederacy and worked together. So that the name of Israel would no longer be in remembrance, Khan. So Canaan, king of Canaan, Jabin, reigned in Hazor. The general of his army was Sisera, who dwelt in Harashim Goyim. The children of Israel cried out to Hawa, for Sisera had 900 iron chariots, and he oppressed the children of Israel force, forcefully for 20 years. Deborah was a prophetess, the wife of Lepadoth, L-I-P-P-I-D-O-T-H, and loved to dizzle fitty, man. Man, we, we got to dig on the board, man, because she just pops up as this prophet, right? <laughs> Let's go. She judged Israel at the time. Christianity says, no, nah, that's a sin, you know. No, no, no woman can be a prophet. She's a prophet. She's judging Israel. She's raised up the same way as all these other Ehuds and, you know, all these other folks. So now here comes Deborah. She would sit under the date palm of Deborah between Ramah. And Beth El, hey, shout out to the lady dragons on the wall on Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel will go up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam of Kadesh Napali, 
Naphtali and said to him, Behold, Hawad, the power of Israel, has commanded, Go and convince the people to go towards Mount Tabor and take with you 10,000 men from the children of Naphtali and from the children of Zebulon. I will draw toward you to Kashan Brook, Sisera, the general of Jabon's army, with his chariot and his multitude, and I shall deliver him into your hand. Baruch said to her, If you go with me, I will go. But if you do not go with me, I will not go. So he's he needs her for support, man. He said, I can't go without you. Love to the lady dragons on the wall. She said, indeed, I will go with you. But the path on which you have chosen to go will not be for your glory. For Hawab will have delivered Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh. So she said, I can go with you, you know, if you want to be some chump about it. <laughs> but just know that they're going to give me the credit, not you. Is that what you want? <laughs> Man, you got to love, man, the script, you know, when you read with a dragonfly perspective. Let's get it for the dispatch. Barak mustered Zebulon and Naphtali to Kadesh and 10,000 men ascended in his footsteps. And Deborah went up with him. Eber, the, Heber, the Kenite. Remember the Kenites, the Kins, which, you know what I'm saying? There's a whole Ken, Khan, Ken dynasty, you know what I mean? In the Mongol, K-I-N. Or K E N. They're also called the uh, Medianites and Jethro, uh, Moses' father in law, or Reuel, they call him in the book of Jasher. He's a Kenite. And he's the one holding the sapphire staff that Moses plucks out of his garden. So these Kenites are part of the mixed multitude that are all, you know, rocking directly with the Creator. So Eber, the Kenite, had become separated from the Kenites, from the children of Hobab, father-in-law of Moses. The children of Hobab, father-in-law of Moses. So that's another name for Jethro, perhaps. And pitched his tents as far as the plain of Zananim, which is near Kadesh. They told Sisera, S-I-S-E-R-A, that Barak, son of Abinoam, had gone to Mount Tabor, Sisera, mustered all his chariots, 900 iron ch chariots, and all the people who were with him from Herosheth Goim to Gishon Brook. Deborah said to Barak, Arise, for this is the day when Hawai has delivered Sisera into your hand. Behold, Hawai has gone forth before you. So Barak descended from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men behind him. Hawai Panic Sisera and all the chariots in the entire camp by the edge of the sword before Barak. Sisera dismounted from his chariot and fled on his feet. Barak chased after the chariots and after the camp until Harasheth Goim and the entire camp of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. Not even one was left. Sisera fled on his feet to the tent of Jael the wife of Heber the Kenite, for there was peace between Jabin, king of Hazar, and the house of Heber the Kenite. Jael went out towards Sisera and said to him, Turn aside, my lord, turn aside to me, do not fear. So he turned aside to her, to the tent, and she covered him with a blanket. He said to her, Give me now a bit of water to drink, because I am thirsty. She opened a skin of milk, gave him to drink, and covered him. He said to her, Stand at the entrance of the tent, and it shall be that if any man will come and ask you and say, Is anyone here? You shall say no. Jael, wife of Eber, took a tent peg, placed a hammer in her hand, came to him stealthily, and drove the peg into his temple. <laughs> she wasn't on that play play. And it went through into the ground while he was sleeping, Deeply and exhausted, and he died. 
So he said, oh, man, you know, she going to uh, protect me. <laughs> she going to protect a hijack. Nah, man, she she put him to sleep and then, you know, finished the job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it's a war, by the way. <laughs> so on that day, Hawa subjugated Jabin, king of Canaan, before the children of Israel, the hand of the children of Israel became progressively harsh over Jabin, king of Canaan, until they destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. So, you know, shout out to the Aquas, man, Deborah, you know. Hey, they will call her a savior, right? They will call her a high messenger, a high messiah, a prophet, a prophetess. Now, Deborah is saying, chapter 5, she's saying, as well as Barak, son of Abinoam, on that day, saying, when the vengeances are afflicted upon Israel and the people dedicates itself to Hawa, they KTC, Baruch Hawa. Hear, O kings, give ear, O princes, cons. I, too, Hawa, shall I sing. To Hawa shall I sing. I shall sing praise to Hawa, the power of Israel. The power of Harushal. Hawa, as you left Seir, as you strolled from the fields of Edom, the earth quaked and even the heavens trickled even the clouds drip water. Mountains melted before Hawa, as did Sinai. Before Hawa, the power of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, highway travel ceased, and those who traveled on paths went by circuitous roads. They stopped living in unwalled towns in Israel. They stopped until I, Deborah, arose i arose as a mother in israel shout out to the aqua when it chose new gods war came to its gates she's telling you man you out of cold you're gonna have war who do you believe you ktc you free who do you believe you believe in a why when it chose new gods, war came to its gates. When even a shield or a spear seen among 40,000. Was even a shield or a spear seen among the 40,000 in Israel? My heart is with the lawgivers of Israel who are devoted to the people, saying, Baruch Hawah, O riders of white donkeys. <laughs> or we're just talking about white dragons. You who sit in judgment and you who walk the road speak up rather than the sound of arrows aimed at the water drawers. There they will recount the righteous deeds of Hawa, the righteous deeds for his open cities in Israel. Then the people of Hawa descended again to the open cities. Give praise, give praise, O Deborah. Give praise, give praise, utter a song. Arise, O Barak, and capture your prisoners, O son of Abinoah. Now the survivor dominates the mightiest of the people. Hawa has given me dominion over the strong ones. For Ephraim, whose root fought against Amalek, after you came, Benjamin, with your people from Machir, descended lawgivers, and from Zebulon, those who ply the scribal quill. So why do we have this Machir title popping up, you know, and this Israelite war popping off, you know what I'm saying, with, with Sylvanus, Solomon the Builder, you know, and Machir Theodorus, and his father was Machir. This title, you know, goes on and on. From Machir comes these uh, lawgivers, these these cold keepers, and from Zebulon, those who ply the scribal quill.
the leaders of Issachar were with Deborah. And so was the rest of Issachar with Barak into the valley, Manak. He was sent on his feet, but in the indecision of Reuben, there was great deceit. Why did you remain sitting at the borders to hear the, the bleatings of the flocks? The indecision of Reuben demands great investigation. This is the Aqua calling it out. She's calling out Reuben. She's like, you know, you were indecisive when it came down, you know what I'm saying, to the battle, to the situation at hand. Why you sit at the gates, man, just to hear the bleedings of the flock? Your indecision demands great investigation. Gilead dwelled across the Jordan and Dan. Why did he gather his valuables on ships? But Asher lived by the shores of seas and remained to protect his open borders. Zebulon is a people that risked its own, its life to death. And so did Naphtali on the heights of the battlefield. <laughs> is, this ha is it hashtag facts? Kings came and fought. Then the kings of Canaan fought from Tanakh to the waters of Megiddo without accepting monetary re reward from heaven. They fought the very stars from their orbs did battle with the Sarah, the very stars, the Drakans, my life. Verse 21. Kishan Brook swept them away, the ancient brook, Kishan Brook. But I myself trod it vig vigorously. Then the horses' heels were pounded by the gallopings, the gallopings of their mighty riders. Curse Meros, M-E-R-O-Z, Meros, said the angel, the, dra the Drakan of Hawa. Curse, cursed are its inhabitants, for they failed to come to aid Ain't nothing Hawa hates more than a brother that doesn't come to the aid of his brother. I'm not talking about, you know, oh, I met somebody on the Internet. They say they need help, but I don't know who this person is. <laughs> you know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a tribe of people who you know who they are that are getting smondered. You can be there to help save their life in real time with your armies and you choose not to help them and you know who they are. So you allow all the bloodshed. These are people you know who are your brothers. You know what they would do for you. But Meros said the dragon, <laughs> they failed to come to the aid of the Israelites, the nation of Hawaii. To, to aid the nation of Hawaii against the mighty. Blessed by woman is Jael, wife of Eber the Kenite. By women in the tent will she blessed. Will she blessed? She asked for water. She gave him milk in a stately saucer. She presented cream. She stretched her hand to the peg and her right hand to the laborer's hammer. She hammered Sisera, severed his head smashed and pierced his temple at her feet he knelt he fell he lay at her feet he knelt he fell where he knelt there he fell vanquished at the aqua's feet who was ktc 
through the window she gazed, as Sarah's mother peered through the window. Why is his chariot delayed in coming? Why are the hoof beats of his carriages so late? The wises of her ladies answer her, and she too offers herself responses. Are they not finding and dividing loot? A comely captive, two comely captives for every man, booty of colored garments for Sarah, booty of colored embroidery, colored doubly, doubly embroidered garments for the necks of the looters. So may all your enemies be destroyed, O oh, Hawa. Wow. And let those who love him be like the powerfully rising sun. And the land was tranquil for 40 years. That was a reading of the book of Judges, chapters two through five, my life. Just digging in this script, enjoying it. You know, truly special checkpoint, our Shabbat, that flows every day of the week. You know, it flows through us in preparation, anticipation of the protection. The code is real. The protection is real. The belief is up to you. Do you believe in the truth? How long will you doubt it? Shout out to the lady dragons on the wall. Aqua de Boer. True honors. Our Lady Esther. True honors. Lady Marion. True honors. Lady Hannah. True honors. We continue to rise like Queen Khalif, <laughs> flying high like Queen Tamar. We continue to rise like Queen Sheba, like the first woman of creation called Lily. To my brothers, we here. There ain't no competition. We all here. You've been rocking with the tribe. You've been KTC. You right here with us. Enjoy the water flow. And let it be the zone you need because you choose for it to be. Dawa da drop nation. Allahua.